In our previous video, we created a find by query method in a CRUD repository extension. And if we take a look at our controller, we're, we're getting back a list of specimen DTOs that match our query parameters. So in this video, I just want to make a simple page that will display these specimens so we don't have to keep looking through the debugger. So a couple things I'm going to need. First of all, I'm going to need a template called specimen details. It will be fairly similar to one that I already have for showing plant details. So we'll take plant results and we'll just copy that. And then we'll paste it and we'll call this one, what do we call it, specimen details, like so, specimen details.html. Okay, I'm just confirming I got that right. Uh, yeah, specimen details, that looks good. So a couple things I'm going to do then. In my controller, I'm going to change this from returning a string to returning a model and view. And so I need to make a few changes here. So we will say model and view, model and view equals new model and view. I'm doing this because I want to pass the list of specimens back to that page so the page can render it. Okay, now let's say model and view dot set view name and we'll pass in specimen details which is the page that we just made okay and now we get back our list of specimens and let's add that to our model and view as well so model and view dot add object and we'll say specimens and we'll simply pass in that collection of specimens and terminate with the semicolon and then we'll return that model and view just like so and save so now we've made a few changes to our controller, and we know the specimens will be passed back in this collection of specimens. So with that, let's run back to that show or the specimen details page that we saw just a moment ago. And we can really use a very similar look and feel to what we already have. What we're looking at is essentially a copy of the show plants page which let me just step back here. This is what that looks like. It's just a, a bootstrapified list is really all it is. It happens to be a clickable list, but nonetheless. So well, what, instead of saying, instead of iterating over the plants collection, we're going to iterate over the specimens collection. And remember specimens, that's what we're passing back here. The collection of specimens associated with the name specimen. So iterate over the specimens collection, and each time we iterate, each time we loop, we're going to shake hand with another specimen. And so we're going to pass that into our look and feel, and uh, we'll just say, well, I'll tell you what, we will make this, for the moment, we'll go ahead and make it a clickable list, so we'll leave that as is. So uh, show specimen details, list group item, that all looks good. Um, the text is what I want to change. We'll change that to specimen. Just fix the spelling there. There we go. Now, the link I'm not worried about too much just yet. We might play with this a little bit later, and we could go to a detail page, or we could just kind of show, maybe do a pop-up of the images associated with the specimen. Right now, I'm just going to put in start as a placeholder, just because I'm not worried about that yet. We'll come back and look at that later. So uh, we're iterating over the specimens, holding them all in this individual specimen object singular each time we shake hands. And then we're printing out the specimen details here within the loop. Now, for this to work, for us to uh, have this part work, it's going to invoke a two-string method on this type specimen. So let's take a look at the specimen DTO, and we confirm it does have a two-string method with the plant name, specimen ID, latitude, longitude, and description. So that is essentially what the Java Virtual Machine is going to do when it reaches this part and it says, okay, I need to print out some information about the specimen. Now, what I'm expecting to see is uh, if I search for Eastern Redbud, it's going to have the primary key or the foreign key of 83. And I'm expecting to essentially see these nine results appear on my page. Now, uh, let's compare that to all of the results that could possibly appear. And for that, I'm going to take off this where clause. And then we say go. And we'll see that there actually are several other plants, but the ones we're going to see are just the ones with 83. So we'll go back and we'll add that again so we can have our test case. Okay, with that, we'll go ahead and restart. And then we will run. Let's take a look. So I search for Eastern Redbud. I come up with Circus Canadensis Eastern Redbud. Click and take a look. 
I have the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 different rows that we saw in our database. And there we go. There are nine different rows. Notice one is Spring Blooms in Cincinnati, and the last one is near WTC. Let's go back and confirm that is the case. Sure enough, Spring Blooms in Cincinnati, and then near WTC. So with this, we've seen how to create a quick and dirty just kind of list page by adapting a page that we already have. I hope this video has been valuable, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.